Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part nine of my WordPress featured content tutorial. This is the final part. By the end of this tutorial, everything will be done, and you'll be able to use this featured content tool that you see here on the right side of the screen. Right now, hold your breath. This is what it looks like right now from all the code that we did. But by the end of this tutorial, it's going to look like this, and it's not going to take too long to actually create it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into index.php because I want this to show up in the blog section of my WordPress file, but I don't want it to show up anywhere else. And I'm just going to put in some code. And this is going to have to be typed in every single time somebody wants this featured content tool to show up inside of their website. So I'm going to just create a variable here. And I'm going to say git blog info. If you haven't watched previous parts of this tutorial, definitely check that out. Otherwise, mass confusion. This is actually be a very fun tutorial to create. What I'm doing here is I'm just getting the actual location for the WordPress directory. So wherever that's being stored. And I'm going to be doing a lot of really neat kind of things here that I haven't done previously with WordPress. And I'm just going to add to this variable and put on the end here the location of my plugin. And again, this is just going to be copied and pasted every single time if somebody wants to use this or, of course, if you want to use this plugin. And we're going to create a new variable, plugin page. And this is going to link to all of the PHP code that automatically, dynamically is created each time a new file is created or a new featured content post is created. And there is the location for it. One dot. Just a simple text file. And then plug in, link to my style sheet so that that's all automatically pulled into. You can see I'm just using that plugin folder again and I'm just accessing other folders inside of it or other files in this situation. And then we close off our PHP code. Again, make sure there's no white space before this or after that. Otherwise, WordPress has a fit. Create a link. H reference is equal to call some PHP code. Echo out the screen. NTT plugin style. This is the location for the style sheet. Close off the PHP section. Style sheet. Type equal to text forward slash CSS. And if you've stuck in there through this entire tutorial, I'm absolutely amazed and leave a message below or wherever you're at because I like to read your messages. It's really the main reason why I do this. So now I'm going to link out to my JavaScript code, which we're going to be making a couple minor changes. PHP, echo, and I'm just echoing out the screen the directories that I created before. Plug in, folder, close the PHP, JS, forward slash, featured, content, dot, JS, and then close off that script. If there's anything in this tutorial you haven't understood, definitely tell me because a tutorial this big and this complicated might be worth doing another explanation, another run through so that you guys completely get exactly what I'm doing here. Because this is quite a lot of work. And if you know how to do this, and you've understood what I've done all along, chances are you're going to be able to pretty much do anything you want with WordPress. So that's really cool. Well, here what I'm doing is I'm going to actually jump out and get this file up here, featured data onetxt so That's what I'm going to do here. In the previous tutorial, we created that file dynamically. Well, now we got to jump out there and get it and display it on the screen. This is just basic PHP code. Page and then echo tt stored fc. Like I said, this is going to be the same every single time. And we're done. That's all you got to do with index.php. And actually, all that you would normally would have to do if you want to use this plugin is just copy and paste this exact stuff right here right into index.php and it's automatically going to show up. So now we got to go into the actual PHP file now that we have that saved. Make a couple changes inside of here. So this is where we began. This is where it all started. And there's a link in the underbar if I haven't mentioned that. Now the first thing we want to do, if you remember previously, I had a whole bunch of information that was printed out to screen whenever the person loaded the featured content tool inside of WordPress in the dashboard area. And it starts right here. We no longer need all of that garbled up mess, so I'm going to just select it and I'm going to scroll the whole way down because this was mainly for testing purposes. I also scrapped Tim Thumb. I decided not to use Tim Thumb. And we can come the whole way down to this and delete that whole entire thing. So that's all gone. That was there for testing purposes. It fulfilled its duty, but it's now worthless. So we don't need it anymore. So like I told you, we got rid of Tim Thumb. So I'm going to have to scroll down through here to NTT Make FC Pages, which is this guy right here. Scroll down. 
until we get right here where we were coming in and messing around with Tim Thumb. Well, I decided not to use Tim Thumb, so I don't need to do any of these things anymore. This is all kind of convoluted anyway. I'm going to leave this the same, but I'm going to come in here and I'm going to delete everything else. And then I'm going to make a couple changes. So NTT, featured, image. So this is just a URL for the featured image. Close that off. Alt is equal to, close that off. NTT, featured content, info, bracket, NTT, post, number, zero. Close that off. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the URL for that featured content. And if you look right here on the same screen, right here is the title. So that's what's being stored in that part of the array. So we're going to make the alt the title. And then this is going to be the URL. And then we're going to come in here. NTT, featured content, info, comma. What the heck? Let's just copy this. Paste it inside of there. And I'm just going to add on to this guy. Let's scroll up so you can see this a little bit better. So then we're also going to link out to the title. It says space, title, info. So all I'm doing is assigning the titles and the alt tags and all those different things. Nothing that crazy. Close off that bracket. Get the title. Class is going to be equal to NTT, featured, thumb. Close off that guy. Close off the div. And there you go. So that's all the changes I need to make. Now we don't have to worry about Tim Thumb. I figured it a much more interesting in way of figuring out how to scroll and create thumbnails. Some point in the future, I might go back to Tim Thumb. Then what we need to do is I had to figure out a way to be able to pass over not only the total number of featured pages, but also pass over the WordPress URL folder directory to my JavaScript files. So what I decided to do is actually to create hidden input tags and pass all that information that way because I kind of thought I thought it was an interesting way of doing it so I'm going to come down here where I define my right arrow I'm going to create a couple more of these guys and in the link to the code that's in the underbar is much better commented so to the end of this featured content page I'm going to create those hidden inputs type is equal to TT and I'm giving this a name of total FC pages and these are just going to be values that's it are going to be passed in this guy. It's just the first way I could think of to be able to pass that information over to my JavaScript file. I'm going to give it a class name equal to NTT total FC pages. If you don't remember from before, what I mean by the FC pages is this is a page right here with five featured contents. This is another page and this is another page. So there's three of them. So I want to be able to track how many of those there are. And like I said before, this is just the first easiest way I could think of to actually be able to do that. Well, I'm also going to pass over the directory for WordPress. So I have to go get that. And you can't do this with JavaScript. So I'm going to have to get PHP to do it for me. And how you get the directory for WordPress is get blog info. I just did this a little bit ago. URL. And there you go. Now you have that information. So we want to pass over this information in another hidden file. So why don't we just copy this, save ourselves a little bit of time, paste it inside of there. And then we're going to just change this name right here to WP underscore URL underscore DIR. And then after value, we want to change this to this right here. So let's just copy this and paste that in. So now all that information is going to be available over in my JavaScript. And then I'm also going to give this the same class name. So copy and paste inside of there. And then I just want to draw special notice to this. Well, whenever you're programming on a local host with WordPress, you have to directly point at the location for your files. However, if you created this inside of an actually hosting company on a server, you would use this. So this is used on the hosting company and this is used whenever you're developing on local host. So I just wanted to point that out because it's kind of important. And that's all that you need to do for the PHP code to perfectly work. So now we'll jump over into featured content, the JavaScript code. And like I said before, how we were able to pass over that information and from PHP, well, now we're going to actually grab it from the hidden file. So I'm going to use some jQuery code here. And I called it NTT Total FC Pages. So that was the name for that guy or the class that was associated with that hidden input box. And then if I want to get the value that I assigned to it, I just go Val right like that. So now I'm able to get that. Again, this is going to make everything much more dynamic. Well, later on, I'm going to want to actually get a hold of the WordPress directory inside here. So I'm going to, much like I just did, I'm going to create another variable. And this is in JavaScript or jQuery or whatever you want to call it. Using a little bit of jQuery, a little bit of JavaScript. NTT, I called it WP URL directory. So there, and I just type in val again. And that gets me all the information that was stored over here. So, see, NTT total FC pages, NTT WP URL directory, these hidden things. Well, I'm going to jump over here, and I'm getting them. 
right like that. So that's how I'm able to pull all that information over. Then I'm going to make a couple changes to the function called change feature content. So let's just scroll down through here and find that. And this is the function that's going to be called anytime there's a change to the feature content tool in any way. So we just got to scroll down inside of here until we find picked full size. What we're going to do is we're going to do some other really kind of neat things. First, I'm going to retrieve the alt for the thumbnail that's clicked. So the alternative that is assigned to each one of these little thumbnails over here. So how do I do that? I go alt, thumb, clicked. So what I'm doing is I'm going to change dynamically so that whenever the featured image is clicked on, see if I click on it now, nothing happens. What I want to do is there is a link that surrounds it. So I want to dynamically change that link. So that's what I'm working on here. And I also want to dynamically change the link for read more. So that's what I'm working on. That's what I'm going to do here. So I go equal to this is a reference to whatever triggered the event. So whenever the thumbnail over here was clicked, that triggered an event. So what do I want to do? I want to jump in here and I want to go, I want whatever alt is equal to to be saved to that. So that's all I did there. Then I want to retrieve the URL for the anchor that surrounds the featured picture up here. There's anchor tags that surround that. So that whenever they're clicked on, you get sent to the proper post. So NTT link to post. So that is the anchor tag that surrounds this featured post here. It has a class name of NTT link to post. And I want to make sure I put a dot in there to reference that it is a class. Then I want to say that I want to specifically target the anchor tag that surrounds this featured pick up here based off of whatever the value of alt was for the thumb clicked below. So how do I do that? Well, if you want to reference variables that are inside the JavaScript code inside of jQuery, you have to put a single quote followed by plus and then type in whatever this guy is equal to. Seriously, if you guys are getting this, what I'm talking about right here, you are really a pretty good programmer. I mean it. I hope you understand what I'm doing here. Then what I'm saying is the anchor that surrounds this featured pick based off of the alt tag for the thumb that was clicked that made the featured pick up here change. What I want you to return is the link associated with it. And I'm actually going to jump in here and grab this. This is the div called NTT featured pick that surrounds the featured image that you see right here. So then there is an anchor tag that surrounds the actual image, which is right here. So what I'm saying is when somebody clicks on the thumbnail, I say, what is the alt tag for that thumbnail? I want to find the featured pick that has the same alt tag. So if I click on gazelle in regards to thumbnails, it's going to change the featured picture to whatever alt matches gazelle. And then it's also going to change or grab this H reference to the actual post for gazelle. And it's going to make that be the page that is opened when somebody clicked on the featured image. Like I said, I'm doing some things here that are absolutely insane. So that's what I'm doing there. I'm getting the source for the anchor tag that surrounds the featured image. So hopefully that makes sense. Again, if it doesn't, leave a comment and I will go deeper into this. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide all of the other anchor tags. Link to post. Again, this is an anchor tag, NTT, link to post. So this class is in reference to all of the anchor tags. All the anchor tags have the same thing. Then what I'm going to say is if the alt tag does not equal the alt tag for the thumb that was clicked on, alt underscore thumb clicked plus, I want to hide all the other anchor tags. So the only anchor tag that's going to show up on the screen is going to be the one where it equals that guy. And then I'm just going to copy this because I want to show the anchor tags that are equal or have the same alt as the thumbnail that was clicked down here. So I basically just got rid of that exclamation part, making this equal. And then instead of hiding, I'm going to show it. And then down here, because I got rid of Tim Thumb, I'm going to come in here, and create a regular expression. Dot. I'm going to say that I want to get rid of any characters as well as source and equal for whatever this featured image is going to be right here. Okay, so I got rid of that as well. And I'm pretty much done. I just have to come down to the next function, get featured content. And what I'm going to do here is link out and automatically dynamically grab all the featured pages that were dynamically created. Basically going to be copying and pasting and a whole bunch of things. So remember whenever I had my PHP code, jump out there and grab the WordPress folder URL. Well, that is stored in this variable. So to make this all dynamic so people don't have to change 
the folder they're going to be retrieving this information from because they're obviously going to be in a different website than I am in. I'm going to go to WP content forward slash plugins forward slash NTT featured content two forward slash JS and then featured underscore data one dot text which I actually could have just left from right there. But either way, there you go. So I got that all set up and now I'm just gonna have to copy and paste this a whole bunch of times. So here's featured data six. I'll paste that in there and just change this to six. Down here, change this to six. This right here, I'm not gonna have to change to anything. Still one. Change this to featured data 11. And then down here, change this guy. And now all of that is done. All the JavaScript is all set up perfectly. So now I basically just have to jump in here and change some of the CSS code and then I am all done. Okay, so I saved all the changes that we made before and you can now see the featured content tool is starting to look more like what we want. This is exactly what we want it to look like though. And now I'm going to change this guy with CSS and get it perfect. So over here is the one we're going to be editing or this and on the right side of the screen is the CSS code for this. So I just have to come in here and change a couple things. Really simple stuff. So if I want to make it larger, I'll just type in 1000. This can stay the same, this can stay the same, this actually can go away. Then relative, this is going to have to change to 424. So I'm just positioning everything. This can stay the same. This I'm going to change to a background color instead of an image so that that works a little bit nicer. So I'm just going to copy what I have on the left side of the screen again. Absolute 40 pixels, da 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 da. I'm just looking through here to see what's different. So on color, I have white. So change that to white here. I'm going to have to move the title over to the right a little bit since I made this guy larger. So just change that to 345. We're basically just copy what's on the right side of the screen. That's all I'm doing here. Here's the horizontal rule, absolute, da 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 da. You can see here the only thing that changes there is white again so change that to white and also I guess the width is going to be a little bit bigger again I'm just copying from the right side over to the left side everything else is going to be the same here for this excerpt except I want the color to be white so change that to white change this to 385 scroll up the article excerpt again copy from right to left so this has to be white just changing the text color and then the width is going to be 385 this right here, 285, 265, this is going to have to change to 285. Everything else is the same. Then we get to the featured pick, absolute. It's going to have to move over 424 pixels so that it fits because, again, this is wider or just copying this. Thumb box, absolute, top, that's the same. This is going to be 424 though, 576, 86. Background color is going to be different, so let's just copy this, paste that into there. Keep on scrolling. Thumbnail frame, relative, relative, 58, 58, da, 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 da. Here, I'm using overflow hidden because this is going to actually contain all my thumbnail images. So what I did was I pasted them into this div right here. And then I said any overflow or since the thumbnails are going to be bigger than this actual frame that's only 58 by 58, we're going to hide all the, of the difference. That's going to be the only thing that's going to be different on the left side versus the right side. And I can actually come in here and get rid of that guy. Now for this featured thumb, I'm actually going to leave this on the left side of the screen because again, I'm positioning it inside of this div. So I'm going to let everything else here be the same. And then let's scroll up to the very bottom here. NTT left button, NTT right button. I'm going to be 438 pixels from the left side of the screen. And then I want to make the opacity a little bit different for this so that it fades into the background color. And I'm going to be doing the same thing here for the right button. So let's just change it right now. And then this is going to be 971. And that is all of the changes. So if I file save that and then we reload this guy. You can see now that the featured content tool that we just created in this series of tutorials is identical to the one we have over here. In future tutorials, I'm going to continue creating this news theme, which actually isn't going to be that many more videos. Leave any questions or comments below. I like reading your comments. Otherwise, till next time.